I'm Jitov Hadens and this week we'll be going over the big version of the Vistascope. I already reviewed the 8mm version, so I'll refer back to that video now and then. The size of this adapter is much friendlier than the baby one, allowing for better shots and not so restrictive focal lengths. Diopters are still a must, and the prism design is responsible for killing off oval bokeh and most of anamorphic players. You still get a 1.5 squeeze, which is the dream stretch factor for many users, and this strong, dreamy feel that when this lens isn't so stopped down. The Arama is another name for this very same lens, and they were all made by the Dutch company Old Delft. As the 8mm version, this is a square lens, and it uses prisms and mirrors to achieve the squeeze. This is a focus through adapter, which means focus is fixed between 4 meters, that is 12 feet, and infinity. That being said, focusing is done on the taking lens, and without diopters, this adapter is pretty much dead on the water for close focus. Still a light build. The Vistascope 16mm weighs 275 grams, that is a little over half a pound. Which goes super safe on a Rapido clamp, so I just shot Jim a message and got myself one. For the front, I made a bigger version of my 3D printed front clamp using a 77mm filter blank. And you can find the link to download the model in the video description below. The Vistascope 16mm is quite hard to find in good condition, and that is mostly due to the age of the mirrors and any misuse it might have gone through before arriving at your hands. You can still get it for an okay price from $180 to $330 on eBay. As you've seen in my fine tuning video, my adapter required some adjustments before getting sharp focus. These were the charts before the adjustment and out after it. The lens performs well throughout without much quality variation between center and corners. It also doesn't seem to be a big fan of super long lenses such as the 135mm. As for the flares, there are some streaks here and there, but they're not directly connected to the light source. They show up depending on the angle of the reflection. And there's a lot of glow and haze and I love all of that, but it's artifacting. For sensor coverage, I wasn't able to clear 2.4 to 1 on full frame on either 40mm and 50mm. At 85 I was able to barely clear the 2.66 to 1 frame, so why would it stick to Super 35 sensors for more taking lens options? I like the crazy artifacts, the reflections, and the unusual flares that you can achieve through this adapter. Smaller sensors are more likely to achieve better results, just as what happened with the 8mm version. One of the strong aspects of this adapter is that it creates a unique look, even among anamorphics, and that it gives the footage a very dreamy feel. And that's not only because it's soft, okay? Uh, it's like it's coming with a strong built-in diffusion filter. I would love to shoot some project with artsy, flashbacky dream sequences using this adapter, just like what I did for the opening of this video. Being lightweight makes it easy to lug around, and being square turns alignment into a walk in the park. So if you like this video, if you're still around, you should hit the like button and you should share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because there's always more anamorphics around and I'm gonna get them all, just like Pokemon. Uh, and you can also support me on Patreon. I really need help there to make this channel better, to make more videos, to get more lenses. And there's a bunch of cool rewards. I'm Chitfa Hedungs and I'll see you next week.